so far in our learning, we have used terms like source IP address, destination IP address, source port, etc. What are these and where can we find these details? Before trying to decode what these terms are, let's take a real life example to make our understanding more clear. Few years ago, maybe around 15 to 20 years ago, people used to communicate using postal letters. There were different types of postcards. One of the forms of postcard was something like this. One side it was completely blank and the other side it was half blank and the other half had few lines in it. We all know we should write the content of the letter in the blank part of the card and the lines are reserved for destination address. We also used to stick a stamp to the postcard. On arrival at the destination, the card would look something like this, where we have the message part, the address, the stamp and couple of postal rubber stamp seals. These seals were not put by the sender. Then why do they appear at the destination? They do not make any sense to either the sender or the recipient of the letter. We know that these stamps were put by the postal system which would help them to route the postcard to the correct destination. Now let's try to map this to computer communications. When computers communicate with each other, they do so in the form of IP packets. These packets are similar to the postcards. We already know the structure of a postcard. Now let's look at the structure of an IP packet. The IP packet has three main sections. The IP header, TCP header and the payload. The IP header is mainly used for routing the packet from source to destination. It consists of source and destination IP addresses. It also carries the version of the IP, which is right now the widely used version is version 4. There is also version 6. The TCP header is the part of the packet that helps in error-free transmission. It consists of source port and the destination ports. It also has something called as TCP flags. Usually, the IP header and the TCP header are combined together and referred to as TCP IP header. The payload section contains the actual data that is being transmitted. A packet has a limit on how much data it can carry. The limit is 65,535 bytes, which is roughly equal to 64 kilobytes. If the data is more than 64 kilobytes, then it is broken down into multiple packets. The overall IP packet structure might look intimidating to you. But do not worry, there are very few attributes that we are concerned about during our day-to-day -day work. The important fields in the packet are source IP address, destination IP address, source and destination ports, TCP flag and the payload. We will be discussing about TCP flags in a later module. Okay, let's take one step further and understand how communication between two computers happen using packets. Let's assume computer A wants to send a photo to computer B. The photo is around 6.4 megabytes, that is roughly equal to 6400 kilobytes. We have established that each packet can carry a maximum of 64 kilobytes. That's why this photo will be broken down into 100 packets of 64 kilobytes each. It is interesting to note that different packets might take different routes to reach the destination. So there is a chance that the packets might not reach the destination in the same order as they were sent. But if we just fit in all the pieces as they come in, it doesn't make up for the actual data. To overcome this challenge, Packets use something called as sequence numbers. These numbers will ensure that the packets are organized into one single piece in the same order as intended. We will be learning more about sequence numbers in a future lesson.